everybody, welcome back to the Gregorius Maths video. In this video, I'm going to be introducing the compactly supported Durant cohomology. This is defined analogously to the Durant cohomology and has similar properties, but there are some subtle differences which I will be exploring in this video. Moreover, at the end, I'll be introducing Poincare duality. So let's get right into it. So a function f. which takes you from M to N, has compact support, compact support if the support of F, which is the closure of the set of all P in M such that F of P is not equal to zero is compact which makes sense as to why it's called compact support the support is compact now again we're gonna actually I I used a to the zero last time to denote the set of all uh, zero forms or a to the n to denote the set of n forms but actually in the last week I've learned that gamma is a more common notation so if we like gamma n with a little c subscript, so that we know we're talking about compactly supported forms, is the set of all com. Actually, I'll just put cp so I don't have to write out compactly supported n forms. Okay, and then, sorry, this is of uh, omega in m. Okay applied to some m and then z to the p again we're going to use z to the p with little c of m this is the set of all cp n forms again cp means compactly supported why am i using p i've been using p all this time <laughs> n forms such that d omega equals zero and b to the p sub c of M is defined analogously to last video, set of all compactly supported N forms such that D omega equals, uh, sorry, D tau equals omega for some tau in gamma N of, uh, sorry, M minus one of, uh, let's just say M. Okay, now, last, like last time, we're ready to define the Durant cohomology, but this time we've compactly supported. So, this is denoted Hn, and then it has a little c of m. This is equal to, again, defined analogously, z to the p sub c of m, so the set of all compactly supported n forms, um, such that that is holding mod. And then, I always get it mixed up, closed and exact, so I'm not even, um, yeah, I always get closed and exact mixed up. I think these are closed forms and these are exact. Um, but yeah, it's this quotient group here. And now we can begin to investigate this group. All right. So the first thing we can see is an example. So how do we, what's an example of computing this? Well. The first compactly supported Durand cohomology group of R is isomorphic to to R itself. Now, why proof? Okay. Well, we we want to construct an isomorphism between the two. Now, if we have an integration map, that's clearly going to be surjective. So, if we have the integration map. Sorry, not over M, over R, which takes you from the first Durand cohomology group of R with compact supports to R, such that it takes uh, omega to the integral over R of omega. And th this is injectivity. We need to show injectivity.
Okay, and um, it is uh, well defined as you can check yourself. Injectivity is as follows. To show that it's injective, we must show that if the integral over r of omega equals zero, this has to happen if omega equals some d tau. Actually, I'm going to use sigma because that's easier to write. Okay? Now, how do we show this? Well, we have to consider f, capital F of x, equal to the integral between negative infinity and x of f of t dt. Now, the important part is that, I'm going to put it in a box, f has compact support. I mean little f, so this here. Now, we're going to use heine borel so the heine borel theorem, to show that f has compact support. Now, okay, we're going to pick omega equal to f dx. First, we have to show that this actually is true. So if omega equals f dx, then df equals um, f dx which equals omega. Now we just have to show that df has compact support. So, now, pick r large enough, so f of r is equal to the integral between r and negative infinity of f of t dt, and this is zero. Why? f has compact support. Therefore, this set right here is compact, and by the heine borel theorem, it must be bounded. So this means that there's a region for r big enough, where this is equal to zero. Sorry. Okay, this is equal to zero. We have to use Heine Braille to our advantage to show that there is a part outside of this set where the function is just equal to zero the whole way. This is for r big enough. And and I reiterate, this is because f, little f, has compact support. So th this is bounded by Heine Borel theorem. And then, again, with the same reasoning, f of little r is equal to the integral between r and negative infinity of f of t dt. And this is zero for r less than zero small enough. Okay, so this is for r big enough and this is for r small enough. Because this is bounded. Okay? So the set of points such that it's this function is not equal to zero, is bounded. Therefore, when we pick r big and small enough, we have areas where the function is just equal to zero. All right, nice. Now, what else can we do? Well, um, we can have Maya Viatores for this compactly supported Duranka homology. But um, first, we're going to have to show what this induced map will look like. So, first consider I, which takes you from U, and it's actually an inclusion mapping, so it takes from U to V. It's an inclusion mapping. Sorry, it takes, yeah, it takes you from U to V, so inclusion. And, um... Uh, hold on, uh... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And then, okay, so if you have I hashtag, which takes you from gamma N, so, again, remember the set of all compactly supported N forms in M, and it will take you uh, from there, sorry, of U, to that of M, such that it sends the compactly supported differential in U to the same differential outside of U, um, so it's zero basically, to the same differential outside U. Now, what this, what's nice about this is that it commutes with the differential, which you might expect, okay? And what's the proof? Lemma 
R-A hashtag. I'm not using star yet. I hashtag, which takes you from, actually we'll just say I hashtag commutes with the differential. That's not an exclamation mark, that's a thing. All right, now, why? Well, okay, so if we have, so let's say I star is applied to the differential. This is gonna be by definition zero for the differential in M, removing U, and it's gonna be the differential for the form in U. Now, what if we swap the order? So if we have the differential applied to I hashtag, this is gonna be, well, this is gonna be um, zero. Again, by definition, it's gonna be zero for omega in M removing U, or it's gonna be omega for omega in U. And then we apply the differential, so this is gonna be D zero, or d omega and then d zero is just zero so we're getting this and there you go now as you might expect as well we have my viatories okay now um yeah so And, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that this induces a map I star, which takes you from the nth drum chromatic group with compact supports of U to that of V. Okay, so this is another induced map. So, now, my the Torres. This is similar to the last uh, video. So if you have U, V, subsets of term manifold M, okay, such that their union, sorry, not U, U, U union V is equal to M, then there exists a delta star which takes you from, and this is where it gets a bit different, it actually takes you from the manifold to the nth drum chromatic group blah 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 of the manifold to the intersection again the cohomology group of the intersection okay such that now we have coming in via delta star to the intersection and then this will go um um, via I star direct sum J star to the <laughs> Durant homology group of U direct sum that of V okay but these are all inclusions and then this will go via L star plus K star to the nth Durant homology group of M and then it will go via this connecting homomorphism to the n plus oneth Durant homology group of u intersect v, and so on and so on. And this is exact. Now I'm not going to use it in this video, but um, it's good to know. You know, it's very helpful for computing um cohomology groups in general so always good to know thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye